sabotages of the economy, leeches on Ugandan soil. This is not their country and they must go. On the 4th of August, 1972, dictator Idi Amin, the president of Uganda, expelled over 80,000 South Asians from Ugandan soil within 90 days. They were forced to pack their bags, leave their homes, their livelihoods, and their friends. If they refused, they would face execution their only hope for survival was to escape this horrific regime. My father, Amir Ali Ismail Majosi, is one of these expats. Now what's most admirable about the Ugandan Asian community is that they didn't spend much time licking their wounds. They hit the ground running. Their resilience to terror and displacement allowed them to settle into a new way of life. They adapted, going on to build new homes, new businesses, where they once again contributed to the growth of the economy. Now, many Ugandan expats will never forget the horrors of what they once experienced in that 90-day period. But many will argue that Idi Amin was actually their positive disruptor. Yes, they went through a terrifying ordeal, but they were now living lives of peace and stability. I've always admired this community for their cohesive nature and their strong work ethic. But it wasn't until more recently that I discovered just how the events of 1972 helped to shape my life. Now, my parents always encouraged me to pursue a good career. My mother, now a retired link worker and nurse of 36 years in serving the NHS, was desperate for me to become a midwife. Unfortunately, I didn't share that same vision for very long. At the age of 19, I returned home from what was a very chaotic placement shift in the maternity unit. I'd fainted three times on that shift alone. In theater, in the middle of a cesarean section. I approached my father and I told him that I didn't want to be a midwife anymore. Yes, the job satisfaction was incredible, but it was no longer my dream. And I was afraid that this was going to upset him, and especially my mother. Now, let me tell you something. Many South Asian parents would suffer an embolism if their child suddenly declared that they no longer want to be a midwife, or a doctor, or a lawyer, engineer, dentist. Subjects in the creative arts sector are not even an option. They're deemed as non-academic subjects and are often discouraged. Yet there I was, wanting to become a graphic designer. <laughs> My parents at the time thought this was the equivalent of playing with crayons in the nursery. <laughs> I told my father that I was afraid of starting this new career journey from scratch, to which he surprisingly responded, Noreen, you need to trust your intuition. Listen to what your heart is telling you. You've made a choice. Learn to adapt. You're just feeling temporarily displaced. I realize now it was that very day that I became my own positive disruptor. I faced my fears. I took charge. I dodged my mum's flying slipper. <laughs> and I went back to college. I set aside any existing skill sets because I didn't want those existing skill sets to then dictate my new choices. 
thankfully. I restored my parents' faith when I graduated in digital communications. Furthermore, when I achieved a postgrad, became a lecturer, but they now both finally realize that the creative arts sector is not just a waste of time. It's a billion dollar industry, one that I'm incredibly proud to be a part of. But had I have not started that new career journey from scratch, from the very foundation, perhaps I'd still be stuck in an unfulfilling role somewhere, unable to truly connect with what I do every single day. No room for passion, no room for growth. The late Sir Ken Robinson once said, just because you are good at something, it doesn't mean you should do it for the rest of your life. The next occasion on when I positively disrupted my life was when I faced my societal fears and told my parents that I was filing for divorce after a three-year failed marriage. Now, many South Asian divorced women are stigmatized within their communities, sometimes within their own homes. They carry labels of being cast-offs or are deemed as failures, all debilitating labels that need to be eradicated. But I'm lucky. I have supportive parents. Instead of seeing me as a burden, they gave me the strength and support that I needed to move forward. Once again, my father said to me, Noreen, if I can escape from an evil dictator, you can escape from societal dictation. Never let society make your choices for you. Never be miserable because of that ridiculous phrase, what will people say? You've made a choice, Noreen. Learn to trust your intuition, learn to adapt. Now I've found that often in life, difficult decisions are often followed by adversity and consequences as a result. But it is within the midst of those adversities, in the thick of that storm, that your resilience will present you with your inner voice. Listen to that voice. I began to listen to mine. I began to truly understand what it was that I wanted from life. Society around us expects us to behave a certain way, for us to serve them, please them. But what it actually takes is for you to become your own positive disruptors, to take charge of your life, your happiness, and your choices. More recently, my next challenge was shrouded in negativity. When I hear the words immigrant, expat, refugee, I'm actually hearing the words helpless, choiceless, defenseless. But the manner in which these humans were being referred to, sometimes within my immediate surroundings, was dehumanizing and frankly disgraceful. I felt it was high time that I perhaps explored my roots and perhaps addressed some of the negativity that was out there. And so another fire burned within and it was pushing me to a realm that I never thought I would pursue, writing. I'm a visual artist. I've only ever expressed myself visually Yet there I was, yearning to give my father's story a voice and perhaps educate those people who don't quite understand the perils of displacement. And so once again, I became my own positive disruptor and I threw myself into the unfamiliar realms of literature. Now my writing journey was fueled by so many factors. I wanted to honor my father's journey 
and my heritage. I wanted to address the negativity that was out there. I wanted to shed light on a historical event that sadly still so many people are unaware of. I wanted my daughter to one day grow up and know about her Ugandan roots. I was very new to motherhood when I began writing my father's memoir and often found myself juggling time between being a mother and writing in manuscript as a daughter. Just months before the release of my book this year, in February, I was laid in a hospital bed having a large benign tumour removed from my sinuses. I spent a whole year prior to that surgery in absolute agony. I couldn't breathe very well. I lost hearing in both of my ears. I suffered from regular panic attacks due to being trapped inside a body that was slowly shutting down on me with each of my senses disappearing one after the other. I've never been so frightened and, unaf and, and, and afraid, scared, petrified in all of my life. But I continued to focus on that positive energy. I continued to channel every inch of my raw emotion into something positive and I continued to write and write and write because it's the only thing I could do. My silver lining, yes, my silver lining. My silver lining was that I learned that I'm actually strong and that sometimes it's okay to feel a little bit frightened. I learned, I learned that I'm a better writer than I am a visual artist. I learned that I'm strong enough and brave enough to challenge cultural dictation. I learned to no longer hide my own scars in the shadows and to be proud of them instead. I'm proud of every single one of my life choices because I chose never to let negativity win. Now negative disruptions, yes, they're part of life, they're unavoidable, but it's up to us to shape what follows and to focus on the positives. My father's legacies have played a key role in my life, absolutely. But that's because he chose never to let his expulsion define him. He's so much more than an expat. For me, he's my conduit of freedom in channeling his mindset. It's not until we are uprooted in life, whether that's by force or voluntarily, that we can truly see things from a different perspective. We often try to hang on to the everyday norm, the run of the mill, but remain stagnant. The world around us has its ways of imposing limitations on us as to what we can truly achieve. And as a result, we become overly self-critical judgmental of our actions and our choices because sadly we live in a world that stigmatizes mistakes. They're not mistakes. I like to call them opportunities for growth, for development, and to become a better version of ourselves. I urge you today to think about how you can become your own positive disruptors. Find the courage to throw everything you think you know about yourself out of the window just once in a while, along with those societal opinions, because they, <laughs> they do not matter. Find the courage to listen to your heart. That voice, give it a platform. Find the silver lining within displacement and within disruption. For it is precisely that which carries us through if we have the courage to pursue a new adventure from scratch. Thank you.